Welcome to Investor Smokes, Money and the Entrepreneurial Spirit. We feature leaders from various entrepreneurial backgrounds to have a behind-the-scenes look at life as an entrepreneur, the wins and the struggles, as well as honest discussions around entrepreneurs and money. Hi, I'm Candice Bax Friesen with Investor Smarts, Money and the Entrepreneurial Spirit. And today I've got Stephanie Polson with me. So welcome, Stephanie. Hi, good morning. <laughs> How's your day going? It's going well. We're doing good yeah. today. Yeah, awesome. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you started with your business and, and what your business is, of course. Um, so I... First off, aside from a business, is I'm a mom of four. Uh, I homeschool all of my kids. And so our morning is usually involved with school. Um, yeah. But um, aside from that, I am the owner of Sweet Disaster. We were a nutrition and fitness company. We do have an entire activewear line also. Um, my drive behind the business is that we're going to help busy women um, create a healthier lifestyle through nutrition, organization, and fitness. So we're just going to bring it all in, rein it all in, work it all out, change some things, nothing too drastic, um, but just help them create a healthier lifestyle. Um, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of the times, mostly it's the moms who kind of control a lot of the house, right? We're always the, the network. So if we can have that, create that healthier lifestyle for ourselves, it ends up falling for the kids and our husband and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I started the business from my own health journey. Um, I had had my fourth and I definitely didn't want to be on large quantities of medications. I kept hearing from doctors that you need this medicine, you need that medicine. Um, and I just felt so trapped. I felt there had to be a different way. And so mm -hmm. I started on a nutrition journey to kind of get myself in a healthier place. Um, and we were starting to go back to homeschooling. My husband's like, what hobby do you want to do? Being home with four kids and homeschooling, you don't get a break. What do you want to do for you? Um, and my friend was like, I think you need to try working out. It'll be great for you. And I was like, I'm not a D person. Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, what? Nice, friend. nice friend, right? Yeah. I know, I'm like, no, thanks. And so I actually did start working out and um, I said, I can give myself 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes for a workout is totally manageable in 24 hours. I think I can give myself that. And, um, it, I fell in love. It was just something that became needed. It was my, I was like, nope, this is my place to be like, nope, mom time. I'm out. Like mom's put her yeah. hat down and is not mom anymore. Um, yeah. And it's been a huge, huge adventure. Um, and so it started as just my own health and fitness and it's proceeded into helping other women um, take control and find their time and fill their own cups and help their own nutrition and fitness journeys along the way. Yeah. And I love how you said like it, it came from being healthy because so much of society, it's all about looks and, you know, you obviously, I have four kids too. So your body changes a lot and that's not traumatic, but it's, it's, yeah, it's not easy to go through. Of course, when, you know, you, you look and feel different after and you sort of know for the most part, it's not ever going to be the same again. <laughs> <laughs> and so no. that's where so much of it comes from is usually like looks and you know we, we don't want to talk about it but really that's usually what it is right so when it comes from a place of getting healthy you know I think that that's where we have to refocus and it's hard because again society says you need to look like this and to be successful and to be someone you need to look like this but I think it goes holistically back to like how do you feel right and are you at your best your best, not somebody else's. Yes, that's definitely something that um, I talk heavily on is mindset. Because if your yeah. mind is not right, and you're not, if you're like, oh, I'm just going to lose these pounds. Well, what are we, what is the goal? Um, because yeah. if I want you to feel all encompassing so much better, because what happens that week when the scale doesn't show all the work that you've done, are you just going to stop? And I want you, I try to teach my one-on-ones is just a lot of the time it's it's not the scale is just a tool it's not like yeah. that's not what we're judging off of it's a matter of how do you feel at the end of the day because if that is feeling better and you are feeling better I don't care what the scale says I care about mm -hmm. you the person both mind and body I want you to feel better all over and yeah. 
it's it's very contrary to what society is saying. Um, yeah. So it's nice to be able to be a little bit of a different breath of fresh air where it's like, yeah. I don't have the quick fix. I'm not going to give you a quick fix. It's not yeah. going to be dropping pounds overnight. This is a long-term thing. And I want, mm -hmm. I want something that is manageable, that's going to work with your lifestyle, that is long-term. It's not yeah. just a diet, it's a lifestyle. And so yeah. that's what I really try to teach is the, the mindset and how do you look at what is success when it comes to that whole thought process? Because right. success could be different for every person. And mm -hmm. you know, one person losing five pounds could be completely holy cow. And for another, it's not. So what yeah. are we finding as that success moment for them is definitely huge too. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And celebrating those successes throughout. When we look at healthy eating, because I, I know that that's a big part of what you're doing. Processed food is everywhere, and a lot of people have just grown up with it. And so maybe they think that, you know, craft dinner is healthy, or, you know, we could pick anything, right? Any, yep. any processed food. So how do you really look at, it's almost teaching people again, right? Mm -hmm. like I've, I've found that, and I'm not even in health and wellness like you, but people will say, well, I don't even know where to start when I, you know, clean up my diet, right? Because they think they're doing okay, but they don't understand why the pounds aren't coming off. It's a lot of retraining when it comes to one, your relationship with food. A lot yeah. of the women that I've been working with, they just have negative relationships. They, you know, they're eating out of emotion. They're eating out of the impulse. They, yeah. we've all been, you know, different, different situations in our past have food related issues. Um, yeah. And so it's retraining the mind that I always tell everybody, I'm like, we are going to fuel your body to thrive, not just survive. Um, yeah. Because a lot of people, well, they're like, well, we just won't eat that meal. And I'm like, please don't do that. Um, we need to eat. Like I'm on, I'm going to show you how you can eat, but just eat right. And how we change mm -hmm. what we're eating and how, how to create the different relationship when it comes to food. Mm -hmm. um, because yes, processed food is all around us. It's inevitable. Um, and with how busy our society is, and a lot of the time it, we're in the car, especially as moms, you're going to this sport and that place and running home from work and all of these things. So how do you choose the healthier option when you're out? How do you turn this into real life? Um, mm -hmm. It's not going to be the fab diet of just remove this from your diet altogether, because what happens when you add it? It's not no, it's what can I eat or how do I eat? Um, because yeah. the whole, a lot of the diets are like, no, none of this, don't eat that, cut this out. And it's like, no, I'm not going to tell you no. I'm going to tell you yes. And I'm going to show you how yeah. to say yes to eating and how to say yes to the food and create something new that will re will end up showing itself when the pounds are being lost and the inches are, are going away for you. Yeah. Because there's, there's too much in any coaching, right? I do financial coaching and there's, there's too much guilt around when you screw up and that's yep. a big problem, right? So, okay, I'm stressed out. I didn't even realize I just ate four cookies. Well, I screwed up. I might as well go eat a whole pie, right? Like, because yeah. I've, I've failed already, right? So there, there's a lot of this guilt and failure and yeah, just that negative focus around eating as well. Absolutely. And I teach my, my clients, I tell them all the time, I'm like, it's 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time, you're going to go ahead and eat clean. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then when you're at the birthday party, I want you to go ahead and eat the cake. When you're yeah. celebrating something, I want you to go ahead and have it. And if there's that occasional night where, you know what, mom needs a moment and it involves some a sort of a drink, go for it. Like have yeah. those moments, live your life. Don't stress about it. Because 80% yeah. of the time you've done good. You've done everything you know you can and you've created it. So mm -hmm. when you have those moments, it's not going to be a negative. And I remove a lot of no's and that negative relationship when it comes to nutrition and what you look like in the image. Because I, it's just, it's healthier when you can think yes, instead mm -hmm. of oh, I've messed up. If yeah. you can go, well, there's life. And you just, yeah. you don't feel guilt about it because then it's going to create you to be happier in the end of it all. Right. 
So if people have gone through, you know, there's all, all kinds of different, I don't want to call them fads, but, you know, maybe somebody has used intermittent fasting and that's worked really well for them and they want to continue doing that or, or they've always loved keto and they want to continue doing that. Is that something that you kind of pick up where they're at and continue to, I don't want to say allow them, but, you know, incorporate different things that they like to do or do you have a certain program that you find works better? Um, so everything is tailored to each individual person. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and where are you? What have you tried? Where have you mm -hmm. seen success? But mainly what's your goal? Is it just feeling better? Okay, then let's do this. Um, right. And I do ask a lot of questions like, what do you like to eat? What is in your normal day? And I yeah. also ask, how busy are you? Because mm -hmm. sitting here making hour long meals is that's not what you have time-wise, then I'm not going to go ahead and put that in like the thought process. Right. Um, I might help you. I'm going to focus more on the like quick 30 minute meals, the pre, uh, meal prepping and how to think of that um, where we can shift and alter um, and how to think about when you're on a certain diet and yes, you're seeing results, but then let's talk about long-term mm -hmm. is that the healthiest option for you long-term um right. can we talk about alternative options or you know like i do a lot of um veggies first because that's gonna yeah. you know it's a very nutritional kind of concept and yeah. some people are like i don't do veggies i'm like i see you let's go ahead and work around that let's yeah. let's shift and alter and how do we take what your day already looks like and maybe tweak it a little where yeah. do we change out instead of fries? Let's do sweet potato fries. You know, like right. finding alternatives that are regular lifestyle mm -hmm. so that it doesn't feel cumbersome. I right. said all the time to my clients, I'm like, if I have to do mental math, it's not happening. So yeah. I'm not making you count calories. I'm not making you weigh your food. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm telling exactly. you realistic ways to take it. And like, let's look at our plate. How are we eating? What are we eating? And I'm a mom, like I said, mom of four, I'm not making five meals at the same time, just so yeah. I can eat something different and they do. I'm eating the same thing they do. It's just maybe tweaked a little or, or yeah. shifted around. And I look at the plate differently um, right. so that it's easier on you and not having to be so cumbersome. Yeah. Because that's, a, I think, a big thing that people face if they're looking to make change is either what are my friends going to think if I go to their house? Uh, maybe my spouse says, this is ridiculous. You know, you're fine. We don't need to change. I like how we eat. I'm not changing or kids revolt. <laughs> so um, I think that's a big thing that, that people have to work around is not just their, um, their mindset around change or their will to change, but it's fighting all the voices that are impacting them every day. Yeah, the external is huge. Um, so that's why I say it's not a diet. It's going to be a lifestyle because this has yeah. got to be something that fits. It's got to be something that's realistic to you and your goals are realistic. But in mm -hmm. all essence is I'm trying to make this easier, not more difficult. I don't want yeah. you to have to, to sit there with a tracker and a counter and all, like, that's just not necessary. There's yeah. <laughs> let's fix something else. Let's, let's look at it differently and create something new for that relationship there. Yeah. So what you do, mostly what you do is online. Um, and do you, I know that you've got a website and an app. So just for the entrepreneurs who are listening, um, cause this is mainly for entrepreneurs and obviously diet is huge when you're getting a company running and, and uh, something that you have to make sure you don't neglect. Right. You know, a lot of people look at having an app as part of their business is pretty cool, but like, it seems like such a difficult thing to do. So what was it like to set up an app? How did you decide that you wanted to include that in your business? Um, so it was actually, all of that process was super easy. I actually, the website I use lets me have both um, like the blog and like written portion of my website but it also mm -hmm. has the ability to shop from it. And it automatically comes with my website. It comes with the app. And so I can 
I can alter what kind of my app looks like and how to get mm -hmm. into it and all of that, but it's included in the site that I have. So it made it really convenient as an entrepreneur because yeah. whatever I did on my website for my computer and my desktop, it transferred to a mobile site also. So I wasn't having to do twice the work. I wasn't having to do you know, anything extensive or recreate mm -hmm. the wheel all over again. If I added it to one, it auto added to the second. Um, so it made it really, really convenient when I went around that route because I knew that this was a one man show when I started. So I wasn't yeah. trying to create a five hour process. Like if I did yeah. something, I wanted it to kind of make it easier. Um, but I also started my business last year, September. So I was mid COVID. Um, yeah. And so I knew that I had to make this as convenient for my customer as I could. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people were using apps. A lot of them are using, you know, easy shopping because mm -hmm. if it takes too long, it's too cumbersome and too many steps, people are out. Um, yeah. We have attention spans very small. I've got to catch them. And so yeah. as an entrepreneur, I went, it's an app and it made it easy because now my, my clients that are with me have the app already. They can just scroll from the ability to sit in our group and chat right. to shopping all in just a slide of a finger. They can go shopping and now it makes it even more convenient. Mm -hmm. um, and so it actually, my website has a little banner across the top that just says, did you know we have an app? Um, mm -hmm. And they can instantly download it. It's available on both you know, like your Androids and your iPhones. And so nice. um, I, I wanted something that was convenient for all, um, mm -hmm. very inclusive, It, but was what my business needed. Um, yeah. And so that was something that was huge when I was doing it. So to be totally honest, my process was really easy, um, but I made sure that I did the research when it came to starting it and picking yeah. my website because I didn't want it to be difficult on me. And if it was difficult on me, that meant it was even more difficult for the, the um, customer on the other end. And so yeah. I was very, very conscious of how it all worked from both ends. Yeah. And so besides signing in to take part in the class together and things like that, are people tracking their food through that app too? I haven't gotten that fancy yet yep. but with in our group um, we do have it where like you and I can chat and you can mm -hmm. show me pictures and track things that way and that's convenient and then I do have a um, like I have a five-day cookbook that comes with a tracker that nice. all of my clients will get when they do that so they have the paper copy of yeah. like a tracker it's in the future it's coming I want to say do a new upgrade and all that stuff. Um, we'll yeah. go ahead and go forward to more of the tracking portion. Yeah. A lot of it right now is still paper. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. And it takes, um, it's step by step. I'm impressed that you have all of this set up in not even a year, you know? And I guess switching gears to the active wear that you've created, again, kudos to you. I think that's amazing to come up with you know, a clothing line that works for people. So uh, tell us a little bit more about what made you do that, uh, go that route so quickly as well in, in the business um, to make that part of a focus and, you know, yeah, sort of the driving force behind doing that. Um, so to be totally honest on the entrepreneur side, um, it was just another form of income. I yeah. didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket. I wanted to have multiple forms of of revenue because not everybody is sitting ready for coaching, but that doesn't mean they aren't ready for me. Um, yeah. So that that was literally the the driving force behind a lot of it was mm -hmm. I wanted a multiple forms of revenue. Um, but when it came down to it, I was like, okay, well, what other form of revenue can I honestly put out that I feel is confident? And it was always clothing. Um, everybody came to me and they were like, I love your leggings. Oh, I love this. Or, you know, mm -hmm. how do you, what are you using to work out in? And I was like, well, I'm using this, but why am I talking about another brand when I could be talking about my own, yeah. um, which was truly the honest route that I went. And, um, because I always had conflicts with my own time of finding comfortable athletic wear because I'm yeah. in it half the day I'm running with kids. I want to be comfortable. I want to feel confident that. 
I can go to the gym. And then if I hit the grocery store at the same time, I don't look like a hot disaster. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to feel comfortable. And yeah. so I started, that's why I started it that way was because if I could bring somebody in from either end of it, yeah. I at least have them within my organization, right? And they are, they are seeing me, mm -hmm. um, but I really wanted women to feel, it was all this mental of, I want you to feel confident, take control yeah. of your life and what you have. And that means your clothing. If your clothes yeah. aren't fitting and you're not feeling confident in them, you're not going to want to hit the gym because you don't feel comfortable. Yeah. And so it was this full circle thing of, if you're comfortable in the clothes, you're going to want to continue. If you're yeah. seeing progress and your pants are getting a little bit baggy, you're going to want to keep going. Yeah, and sure. if I can be the person to help facilitate that and help you feel comfortable and confident, then I've done my job for the day. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of the route of why I started and what the thought process was with it. Mm -hmm. So between, yeah, cooking stuff too, which obviously you could create products with that as well. But I think there's so many different product lines that you can and probably will incorporate. But is there certain things that you're looking at for, I know it's only been not even a year, but certain things that you want to do in the next, you know, two to five years in your business? Um, as a company as a whole, I would like to become a household name. Um, yeah. That's just, I would like to, I would like to do that. Um, I want to be part of conventions so that we can start to having maybe a pop-up day of like workouts, nutrition, like what is a one-on-one -on -one client getting and do like yeah. different cities. Um, so where it's like a pop-up in this city and we do a day, it's an event, it's a day, it's an experience. And then we move to the next one and it's this like pop-up all over the country and maybe taking it international, but let's start country-wise. Yeah. Obviously um, updating my app, getting that going. It's just growth. I'm open. I've literally done the, I'm open to whatever, wherever this takes me. Yeah. Um, I want to say yes to opportunities. Um, I don't really want to, as an entrepreneur, I don't want to like be, oh, I need to be in this route. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really open to like seeing where does this all take me? What does my yeah. audience and my customer need from me? And I'm noticing a lot more nutrition. So I definitely want to get my five-day cookbook published yeah, and in bookstores. And then on top of it, create like a full recipe book and get these things out and showing that this is all obtainable. It's real. Yeah. It's something you can do and it yeah. doesn't have to be extensive. And I think again, it doesn't have to be just salad. Like people think, well, if I'm going to start trying to lose weight here, I better just go buy a whole bunch of heads of lettuce, but there's so much more to it. And I think, you know, if you're having guests over, they don't, you know, there's so many ways to make food taste amazing that they don't need to know that it's actually not super high calorie and, or super yeah, sweet yeah. is another one because North America is all about everything, sugar, 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 right? So um, yeah, I think that's an amazing angle and way that all of us really could benefit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, those are all things on the horizon. I definitely want to, I want to make this um, a new a new way to look at nutrition for sure mm -hmm. and as you grow then there's so much involved like hiring more coaches and things like that mm -hmm. um, have you looked at that already or do you have a system in mind I actually do I have a network of a community here of new and different coaches I have actually one of a really good friend is actually more on the fitness side and mm -hmm. so it's interesting, the combination of putting the two of us together because he's a male. So he touches that, like he gets to touch the male side of things and I'm the female yeah. side, but we both all need both ideas, you know? And so he yeah. comes up with the creative workouts and, or, you know, he'll give me different ones of, Hey, this would be great for your, you know, for you ladies. And I'll give him tips of like, Hey, here's some good nutrition things that the guys would want. And so mm -hmm. we've been bouncing ideas off. So there may be a collaboration coming soon of adding to each other um, yeah. and giving, giving that I want the well-rounded aspect when it comes. Um, and so yeah. definitely adding new coaches would be something, you know, as the company grows, I mm -hmm. can only be available so much. So I want to make sure that everybody's getting that really good quality and um, 
So definitely adding new coaches, but I do have a network that I'm building as we grow. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And people connect with different people. There's a lot of it is mm -hmm. personality too, right? Like some people need way more work on their self-esteem, let's say, and the next person's got major health issues or mobility issues that you're working around, right? Like all of us are so different that it right. really has to be, you know, quite customized to help people the most efficient way, right? Absolutely. And that's why um, I want to make sure that like when the team grows, that you see different faces. Um, you, you see a mom, but I also want to see, you know, the single person who's running a business of her own. Um, mm -hmm. I want to see guys on our team because, you know, sometimes guys don't want to come to the girl and be like, Hey, I need your help. Um, it, it's, you know, there's still egos and there's still, you know, it's still a mindset thing. Um, yeah. so having guys on our team, both older and younger and being able to yeah. show that, you know, this is something that is for everyone. It's not just for one of us. It's for yeah. all. Yeah. And I think another, um, I think the baby boomers would be another group that, mm -hmm. you know, some of them maybe have never worked out, but at that, you, you get to that age, I don't know what it is, maybe 50 or, you know, where you start to really notice that you're losing that muscle mass, right? So exercise becomes more and more important as you get older. But I think that's something that maybe the doctor talks about, but you don't hear it mainstream, right? Again, you, you see the 20 year old who's working out on, on online on social media, but, but there's these groups of people, whether it's somebody with a disability or um, yeah, or somebody who's extremely overweight that can't do the same exercises as somebody else, but also age wise, you know, people have to do different exercises or refocus and say, you know what, maybe I've never, you know, had to work out. I've been pretty healthy, but you get to that age where, okay, now, you know, osteoporosis comes in and all, all kinds of stuff where we really have to keep that strength. Right. Absolutely. And um, it's actually interesting. You brought that up because I am actually um, personally signing up to do a coaching um, like a, a course that yeah. teaches about, like women specifically, but how your body will change at different points and how that yeah. affects your, your health and your fitness and your nutrition. So like at 50, you're going to take nutrition in differently than you did at 20. Um, yeah. And so that's definitely, I, as a coach want to make sure that I can give all ages the best information. So I'm doing research on my own side of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do have some clients that are coming, you know, my own parents are like, so help me out here, but you know, what am I doing? How am I doing? Um, and yeah. they'll do, you know, weekly check-ins with me, um, because they know that it's something that they need to take more considerate, um, mm -hmm. than now that they are older, they're not 20 anymore. And they see that, you yeah. know, what? I can't eat a whole pizza and still not feel it. Um, yeah. And so they're, you know, they're very more, they're a lot more conscious about what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And then in my world, I've actually included my kids um, mm -hmm. because I think that that's another generation that um, yeah. we don't want to, in, we don't want to start them in the wrong direction. And right. so I have my girls involved a lot in showing my girls and my boys about like, what are we eating and how are we eating to try and combat any um, eating disorders early before they can ever start and showing the kids how to feel confident and comfortable in themselves and believe in themselves at any stage. Because if you can start it young, then they just kind of keep it going. Um, but creating that new avenue with the older generation, because they're so used to like the fear food pyramid. And I'm like, no, we're yeah. going to change that. I'm gonna, we're yeah. not going to the pyramids anymore. We're not doing pyramid schemes. We're going to, we're going to talk about something different. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so um, definitely talking with an older generation is um, something that I've been looking at. And I know that it's, it can be a little intimidating um, because yeah. of me being a little bit younger that they feel like, oh, I don't know this young, I don't need this young to help me. And so my parents have been really open and they explained to a lot of their friends of, you yeah. know, my daughter's been helping me and she just, you know, sits down calmly and tells you all what you need to do. And so yeah. it's been great trying to, um, they're a little more stubborn in their ways, but it's, 
it's work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's work. They they don't know that you're you're eventually going to start you know bringing them in live or taping them and yeah. Yeah. A little we'll, thing. we'll just tell them later when it all happens. <laughs> Let them know later. Yeah. But it but again, it's so important for people to see people that they can relate to, right? So if people are interested in working out and they're like, oh, there's somebody who's a little bit older. Okay, maybe this is for me, right? So yeah, so important to include all yeah, everyone's dealing with different things and uh body shapes and like I said, disabilities. My daughter has a disability, so we work out and eat differently for her too, right? Like we all have different things that we're working around. So absolutely. And like when it comes to like the clothing line, um, I know it's been super helpful having my mom be there with me um, and, and having different friends of mine put on the clothes. And I have done photo shoots with some of my yeah. neighbors that are all different sizes um, yeah. and being able to put a face that is not just one, not just me, um, but two, it's other people. It's showing that this yeah. is possible for all. Um, yeah. And, you know, my mom, she's a little, you know, she's older than me, um, but <laughs> she's in her fifties. And she says, you know, she's like, it makes me feel confident to put these legs on. I don't have to worry about where yeah. this role is or that is, or that, you know, like, she's like, yeah. I just I've never okay. felt so comfortable in a pair of leggings. And I was like, right um yeah. and so it shows different body types and that's what I really want to make it known is that it's not a we're not a one trick pony we're not just for one type um that yeah. this is for all and it can be for all yeah that's awesome I love what you're doing I love how you're supporting people and ultimately um you know I think if we feel better again it's holistic right if you feel better suddenly your relationships end up becoming better. You're handling money better, like everything just, you know, maybe you're confident enough to apply for a job. You know, all these things are so interrelated. And so I love how you're building people up through what you do. I could just see that you're going to have massive success. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Thanks so much for your time. We often have guests come back. So in the, you know, in a year or so, I'd love to have you back and see where your business has gone and all the different avenues you've explored. And it's, it's always very cool to see how entrepreneurs follow different paths within their businesses. Right. So love to have you back. I would love that. Yes, absolutely. All right. Take care. Stay in touch. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for this episode. For more information, visit us at investorsmarts.ca or find us on social media.